This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 997 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you, one day at a time. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is an excerpt from the Certified Horsemanship Association episode on Horses in the Morning. Janet Young joins co-host Christy Landwehr with several exercises for developing relaxation and feel, some for on the horse and some for off. And we'll get right to our tip after this important message from Kentucky Performance Products. Spooky, tense, edgy, unfocused... If these words describe your horse, a calming supplement could make training easier and riding more fun. Trouble-free paste from Kentucky Performance Products is scientifically formulated to support proper nervous system function and help your horse maintain a more confident, focused, and relaxed disposition. Trouble-free contains a blend of ingredients that support your horse's normal nerve cell and muscle function and is available in a convenient 80cc oral dosing syringe containing two 40cc servings. Ask for Trouble Free from Kentucky Performance Products at your local feed and supply store or go to www.kppusa.com. And now, on with today's tip. So the next step is helping the rider feel what the hind legs and the front legs are actually doing. And a lot of times if we get wrapped up in a visual of trying to picture that foot and figure out what it's doing, it's hard to know what you're feeling for. But if somebody can give you a reference point so that you know what body part is feeling what and how that ties into what the feet are doing, that can simplify life so much. So one of the biomechanical factors in a horse's body is as the horse moves its hind legs, the ribs swing back and forth. Because generally speaking, the ribs have a little bit bigger width to them than the width between the stifles. So when a horse moves a hind leg forward, it compresses the ribs on that side. The hind leg on the other side is extended out behind, so guess where the rib cage goes? Out on that other side. So you can teach the rider with a grab strap if they need it for security to let their leg lie draped down the horse's side and feel for the barrel and the rib cage to swing back and forth between their legs like the clapper in a bell. Now we'll want them to be relaxed enough so their leg can just rest on the ribs and follow it. Now the only moment you can influence the power, the height, the length, or the direction of the stride of the horse's leg is at the moment of strike off. Because once Mm -hmm. it's in the air the horse can't keep its balance very well and try to change what it started to do. Once that foot lands on the ground, that leg has another job that's called holding us up so we don't fall down. So when we feel the swing of the rib pushing the furthest out against our calf, that's the moment that we can give a gentle pulsing granny hug or a squeeze with our calf to encourage the horse to pick that hind foot up and bring it further underneath. And one of the nifty things that uh, ties in is when you give a squeeze with your calf, that encourages the horse to contract its abdominal muscles, which help not only from the squeeze ask the horse to push off with more energy, but encourages the horse to contract its own abdominal muscles, which helps pull the hind leg further up underneath the barrel. That makes for a smoother ride. So, and that's so true because you talk about that, you know, the motor of the horse is in back, right? And even though the horse stands around all day, 60 to 65% is on their front end, their motor is in the back. That's right. So the big challenge is to feel the right moment when you can ask for a little more gas in the back end without necessarily speeding things up. So the horse is not rushing. He's just pushing off with more power. Absolutely. So, and then if you want to feel what's going on with the front legs, as the horse extends a front leg forward, it stretches and flattens the shoulder muscle under your knee. And as the horse rotates forward over that front leg, 
so the front leg comes back underneath the body a bit. That makes the shoulder muscles bulge and push your knee down and back. So when you can work on helping them feel that, and you get the rider to verbalize what they're feeling for those that are auditory learners, so they can count off to you the swing of the ribs, left, right, left, right, and they follow the ribs with a gentle little granny hug. Then when you switch to the shoulders, you can have them count off flat bulge, flat bulge, or forward back, forward back, or whatever key phrases work for that particular person's learning style. And, you know, we hear so much about shoulders in, shoulders out, haunches in, haunches out, not only for um, dressage, but for uh, all kinds of disciplines. I mean, if you don't have that type of movement, that type of lateral movement with your horse, it's really hard to do some more advanced things and also hard to stop them in an emergency situation, right? It's kind of good to be able to move body parts when you have some sort of a um, horse that's not paying attention or starting to run off with you. So what are some subtleties to be able to know are the shoulders in or out or the haunches in or out? What are some things that that you um, help your riders with during those moments? Well, one of the things I've observed over the years is whatever side of your hips, whatever seat bone you're putting a little more weight on, the horse will tend to curl its ribs around that side. So if you're sitting a little more weight to the left, the rider is going to be, or the horse is going to be a little more concave on the left side, and the hips will tend to curl in a little more to the left. The neck will tend to curl a little bit more to the left. So if you want to get the horse to go straight, you're going to need to have even weight in your seat bones and make sure your spine is centered over the horse's spine. If you want to do something like shoulders in, your weight will go a little bit more to the left if you're going to do shoulder in to the left and your left leg will give a gentle pulse at that moment when you feel the ribs push out against, and your right rein will make a little, like, scoop a melon ball movement towards your left hip bone without actually crossing the horse's neck. So the energy from the inside hind gets rebounded off the outside rein, and that brings the horse's shoulder right in. So, Absolutely. And what are um, some reasons that we would want the shoulder to be in? Because when you do that, what you're actually doing is an isolate a hind leg set of muscles to build greater strength in the hind leg on the inside of the bend. Okay? So if you do the preliminary exercise of shoulder four, which is half as much as shoulder in, you're asking the horse to bring his shoulders slightly in so the inside hind foot is stepping towards the center of the chest, and that's the preliminary exercise before a horse has developed enough suppleness, range of motion, and strength to do a full shoulder in. The full shoulder in, you're using just a little bit more outside rein pressure against the withers so that the inside hind and the outside fore are working in a direct line. And that causes the inside hind leg to step directly under the horse's center of mass and to carry more of the weight. So obviously we work both directions, one and then the other. Just like when you go to the gym and you're working out a set of muscles to get stronger, you don't do exercises that work all of the muscles in your entire body equally. You instead have to do exercises that isolate the muscles that need strengthening. So that's Absolutely. the purpose of the shoulder in. And, of course, that also helps develop the horse's balance and strength so they can get more and more uh, balanced and stronger. And I think when we hear the word feel, we oftentimes think feel the diagonal, right? For those of us that post, and I know most Western riders post too, and it's a really good idea to be changing your diagonal, even if you're riding fence because you can eventually soar your back if you're always on the same posting diagonal um, for the horse's back and your own um, body, too, from doing that. And so what are some exercises that you give your students, Joanne, to start to feel that instead of always looking down at the shoulder? Well, that simple exercise of feeling the swing of the rib cage against your calf tells you when the horse is pushing off with the inside hind, and the flattening of the shoulder muscle tells you when the front leg is reaching forward. When you're going to post a diagonal, when you feel the ribs swing out against your inside away from the rail leg, you know the horse is pushing off with the inside hind. You let that boost you out of the saddle, and you will at the same time feel the outside shoulder muscle begin to flatten out as that front leg 
stretches forward, so you just follow that up with your hip. And that seems so to work your, really well. So in your opinion, why do we post on the correct diagonal, meaning rise and fall with the leg on the wall? Why do we do that? Because it's easier for people that want to use their eyes to look down and see the shoulder, but that's the shoulder that corresponds with the inside of the turn hind leg. And just like riding a bicycle around a corner, you want to have your weight with the pedal down on the inside of the turn if you want to not wipe out. When you're going around a circle or a corner, you want the hind leg of the horse on the inside of the turn to be the one up underneath its body supporting the weight when your seat is in the saddle. Absolutely. So it becomes very important when you're doing circle work and things like yeah. that. And I know that we start to teach our riders, you know, at a little bit higher level, and we say that the rail is just the rail. The inside and outside really is based on bend and not based on the rail. So when we first start riding, of course, the outside is always the rail, and the inside is not the rail. But when we start working on more advanced maneuvers, it's based on horses bend, but the same concept, that the correct diagonal is going to help that horse get around that turn, bend, or circle. Exactly. And that's why as you move up the levels in dressage, they involve things like counter canter to show the horse has such good balance. He can remain vertical and driving with the hock of the lead and not lose his balance and lean to one side or the other. But that's after he's really good at what we call the correct lead. There's a distinct difference between a wrong lead and a counter canter, as you know. Yes, very much so. And so that's perfect because, you know, the other one that we always hear about feel, how do I feel the lead that I'm on? How do I not have to look down? So what is an exercise for folks for that one? Well, again, work on the lunge line can work really well. But one of the things that I tell people is every one of us is horse crazy. When we were a little kid, we have to admit, we pretended we were horses and we galloped around the backyard. And if you're mean like me, you put rope around your sister's shoulders and made them be the horse and you made them go in front of you. (laughs) I had very patient sisters. (laughs) But we all instinctively mimicked the horse's movement. Okay? So every little kid I've ever seen, including myself many decades ago, would set up to pick up and go cantering or galloping off by moving one hip forward, and then we'd rock our weight back on the other leg and push off. And that's exactly what a horse does when they're going to canter. They push off with the non-leading hind. Then we have the leading hind and the non-leading fore as a diagonal pair. Then the leading fore touches down. The other three legs pick up. The moment of suspension, the non-leading hind touches down and starts the whole cycle over again. So to feel for a lead... I ask the rider, before they ask for the canter depart, to arrange their seat and legs in the saddle and drape down the horse's side as though they were a little kid standing on the ground and going to pretend they're a horse. And I'll just say, all right, do what you did when you were a little kid. Start cantering. And they will instinctively contract their lower abdominal muscles and push off with their outside leg and lift their pubic arch of their pelvic bone structure, and off they go in the canter. And the way you feel for the lead in a canter is you feel for which one of your hips has gotten pushed a little forward. And invariably, if you have people that think, oh, I'm going around the circle and the outside legs have to take a longer stride to keep up with the inside legs, so I'm going to move my outside leg and hip and shoulder forward. If the horse is in the correct lead, you know what happens. The horse breaks. And Mm -hmm. if they are not cantering yet, if they can get the horse to pick up the canter, it's going to be the outside lead rather than the inside lead. So work on the lunge, again, helps a whole bunch because you're free to feel, you're free to hold on to a grab strap and arrange your body and feel what's going on in the horse without having the responsibility of making things happen. And that takes a lot of pressure off. And, of course, we all know that tension makes us unable to feel. So the more we can do to eliminate tension in our riders, the quicker they're going to make progress. So is there any exercises we kind of finish up here that would help riders that know that they're tense? You know, some of us are tense, not normally at the walk, but some of us get tense at the sitting trot, or some of us get tense when we canter or lope. What are some exercises um, maybe off the ground that will help with that tension or on, on top of the horse? 
Okay, things that can help us work on our balance and stretching out the muscles that tend to get tight really help. So one that I find helps is when people are tense, they grab with their adductor muscles, the ones that pull our knees and thighs together. So exercises that can stretch them out. So if you stand with your hand on the back of a chair or against a wall for balance so you're not tightening things to keep from falling, and stand with your feet about a hip width apart and your toes pointing forward, and then put all your weight on one foot, and that would be the foot that's on the side towards wherever you're balancing with your one hand. Then pick your other foot up off the floor just slightly by picking your toe up, letting your heel touch the floor lightly. Then use your abductor muscles on the outside of your leg and very slowly and gently take that foot as far out to the side as it will go. And it's important to do it gently and slowly because you don't want to use momentum by hurling your leg out because that's not going to stretch and strengthen the abductor muscles that pull your legs apart that you need to. Then when you've taken your leg as far out to the side as you comfortably can, you very softly and slowly release the contraction of your abductor muscles that pull your legs apart and allow gravity to slowly pull your leg back until your heel touches the floor again. And you do 10 reps and then switch hands and do the other leg the same way. That really helps loosen up hips and loosen up your adductor muscles so you can sit balanced down around the horse. Then there's another one that we refer to as butterflies, um, and that's one where you're sitting on a horse. And this one was taught to me by a physical therapist who also was a dressage rider and instructor named Claudia Craig about four decades ago. And what she instructed was sitting on the horse, you take your feet out of the stirrups, let them dangle, have someone standing there holding your horse for you, and then you turn your toes up and in, so you're like knock knee and pigeon toe just a little bit, and then you're going to use your adductor muscles and very gently take both legs as far off the saddle as they can comfortably go. And in the beginning, usually because you're already slightly stretched sitting on the horse, that's about like a 16th of an inch. We're not talking uh-huh. way out in the air. And you continue Absolutely. to let your legs dangle. And then rotating from the ball and socket joint in your hip, take your whole leg as far back as it can comfortably go. And my, we might be only talking half an inch or an inch. just depends on sure. your range of motion. You never push into pain. You just go to the edge of a comfortable stretch. And then you take a deep breath, let it out, and let your legs dangle down so your toes are hanging towards the ground. And you do that two or three times. Usually when I have had students do that and I tell them to pick their stirrups back up, they'll look at me and go, it feels like somebody shortened my stirrups two or three holes when I wasn't looking. And that's because that stretches out your adductor muscles and your iliopsoas, which is that nice ring of muscles that wraps around inside the floor of your pelvis and helps your guts not fall out when you take a deep Mm -hmm. breath. Mm -hmm. Um, And that builds a lot of relaxation in your seat. And, of course, all the famous exercises we do with arm circles and airplane wings and trunk rotations, so one hand goes over the horse's ears and the other over the horse's hips, those all help alleviate tension, too. And when a rider is comfortable doing that at the halt with someone holding their horse, then they can go to being led at the walk and eventually at the trot. And another really important factor is we've heard practice makes perfect, and we've heard the modifier Perfect practice makes perfect. Well, there you go. Go to horsetipdaily.com for links to today's contributors. If there's a topic you'd like to hear here on Horse Tip Daily, you can drop us an email via the website as well, horsetipdaily.com. And you can have every single one of your favorite Horse Radio Network shows with you wherever you go with the free app for iPhone or Android. Go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. Download it today. It's quick, it's free, it's easy. This podcast has been made possible through the generous support of Kentucky Performance Products and listeners like you. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. (laughs) 